Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the range, we're going to tell, uh, talk about the bit depth of images, and we're going to talk about gamma. Now, um, when we looked at the export video, uh, the last one that I just did there, uh, I quickly kind of brushed over this and, and what this is. <clears throat> and there's, there's some things in here that are kind of important, some things are not as important. Uh, file format also uh, one of those categories and of course we have this ignore vertical scale so I felt like the best way to show you what's going to go on what's going to happen with that and then how you're going to deal with it would be useful to you so if I go ahead and um, uh, go through these we have different file formats and the different file ma formats will have certain uh, potential bit depths so PNG when it exports it's going to be 16 bit um, to my knowledge, there isn't any one of these that is going to export as 8-bit, but um, if you do take one of these and take them into another software and then do some editing to it and then save that out, there is potential for you to accidentally convert it to 8-bit. We'll see what happens when um, th that occurs. So those are formats that are currently supported, although 8-bit PNG is not supported. Um, I, I tried it, I converted to a, a, a PNG 8-bit and then it doesn't load at all but something like an 8-bit TIFF for example does uh, and uh, when I say 8-bits I mean per channel so if there are any programmers out there I'm not talking about an 8-bit image per se I'm saying 8-bits per channel so um, RGB each one has 8-bits so that would be uh, 24 bits uh, stored in the piece 32 if you have an alpha so uh, those those are the the one factor that you have to consider so we have the 16-bit one here and then we have the other ones which are 32-bit those that's what they're going to export we have this color space which has the rgb srgb and scrgb now uh, rgb uh, typically speaking i would assume would be uh, p potentially stored in a linear kind of way, but I don't think it is in this particular case, and you'll see why. Um, sRGB has a gamma of 2.2 applied to it, usually in interpretation, and that will change um, the mid-range of the value, so that can affect things. And then we have the sCRGB, which is a high range um, sort of bit depth. It, it stores information below the value of zero and above the value of one. Um, these other formats can do above the value of one, but I don't think that they do typically below the value of zero. Maybe someone can correct me on that. Uh, so uh, this is a Microsoft format and it's supported by a few things. So those are there. And then we have the ignore vertical scale. And the idea there is supposed to be similar to applying say an auto levels to your uh, mesh or your mesh, your, your height map, and it'll export like that. So let's see what it looks like. So right now I have an sRGB. Um, well, this is this is what we start with. So this uh, is the actual piece that I put together, and uh, what we have here is an sRGB with the ignore vertical scale on it. So if we click on that, it's 32 bits. So it's an EXR, and we get this massive thing. Now, because it's sRGB, I know it has a gamma on it, so I have to put an inverse gamma on it. And the inverse gamma is 0.454. Um, it's giving me a granular value of only two decimal places, so I'm just getting 0.45. And if we take this and compare it to the original, give a second to load, you can see there's very little difference between the two of them. They're very similar. If we go from this one here, which is ignore vertical scale, to an SCRGB, you can see what happens here, right? Um, we see something SCRGB. You can see that there's still a gamma curve applied to it. And if we apply the gamma, we'll notice that it gets significantly smaller than it should. So not as, um, it doesn't go back to the regular size that we would expect. Instead, it goes to something considerably smaller, about a quarter. So if we increase this by 25%, 
we get something again very similar to the original so it comes back to something similar and there's subtle changes here and there although some of those subtle changes I think might actually be the result of certain nodes recalculating there's a little bit of randomness that sometimes goes in there so the majority of it's the same but certain sub calculations might be different so that's the SCRGB so that's the one that has the range below zero and above one potentially doesn't mean it's going to have that information when we export it from here it just means it has the potential to hold that information if we go to the RGB model you're going to see some changes some shifts in some of this stuff but the majority of it stays the same and I believe that again is for the same reasons um, subtle differentiations between them and the same result uh, is required you go ahead you uh, alter the gamma and then do an auto levels 25% so 0.45 and then auto levels and we get something similar to my initial export so going back to this one this is the sRGB and each one of these are all sRGB as well I've saved them out as different formats however so I've got the EXR which goes full 32-bit I've got the PNG which goes 16-bit and I've taken it into Photoshop converted it to 8-bit and then saved about uh, out as an 8-bit TIFF which will load into Gaia so let's first see what the 32-bit looks like so if I switch to this you can see I get that and it's not the same again as what we see here the gamma curve is altering it so it's not as high range as that other one but it's there when I gamma it it corrects the bulging shape that happens there so it's no longer bulging but then goes down to a portion of the size so we have to go ahead and adjust this if I switch to a 16-bit mode interestingly enough I don't have that bulging effect that I had before all I need to do is simply apply again a 25% auto level and I get something very similar as a result so a slight shift there now if we go 8-bit this is where everything goes completely wrong 8-bit doesn't store enough information to really give us appropriate values you get something that looks very noisy very stepped and this is at 4k so you know part of the noise is coming from that but ultimately it's it's from not having enough range to store those values in between and get those nice transitions that we need please excuse my computer if you hear that whirring noise it's uh, it's having difficulty trying to jump from different version to different version so 8 bits and if I do an auto levels on that I'll get the height back but I mean there's none of that detail in between so clearly not worth it if you get something like that chances are you've just lost the detail so the key difference is again um, ignore vertical scale you put a gamma of 0.454 and you'll get back something very similar to what you created in the first place if you do an SCRGB you're going to have to do a uh, gamma correction with an auto levels of 25% if you do RGB same thing and sRGB same thing so the ignore vertical scale means that you only have to use one node to correct it alternatively if you export as a PNG sRGB for whatever reason the gamma curve doesn't seem to apply uh, it could be just a matter in the way that the files interpreted but it seems to be storing it correct and so a PNG from from Gaia all you have to do is just get its size back up one thing that I have not yet checked and maybe I'll just pause this video and check it so that we can confirm so the final moment of truth here we have an export which has the following settings we've got uh, PNG which is going to save it a 16-bit file it's set to sRGB and we have ignore vertical scale 
now if we click on it, give it a second to build, and you'll see only the subtle changes that happen from that erosion. It looks otherwise exactly the same as the um, file that it came from. So if you wanted to go without any, having to change any nodes with regards to how Gaia operates, um, and it's important to recognize that because this is not um, saying that this is the way to do it for all exports for all software that you're going to be using. Again, if you watched that original video where I talked about building and uh, I mentioned that um, that part of it, it depends on the lookup tables that are provided by the software that you're using, how it interprets the gamma and the formats that you're loading. So um, this could be reinterpreted as any number of other ways. So this is the way that Gaia is interpreting it. So if you're taking out of Gaia, bringing back to Gaia, you want exactly the same kind of thing. Chances are this would be the best way to export it so that you can have that baked out. So um, the last thing that I'll talk about quickly is just to give you another visual with regards to Gamma and how that kind of operates. Okay, so here we have uh, a linear gradient. And so linear often will look pretty much like this. It just goes all the way through. And if we go to image adjustments levels, we have this middle value here, which really represents the gamma value. Uh, so what this means that when you change gamma, black remains as black, white remains as white, but the uh, mid-range will, will alter. Gamma of 2.2 is what sRGB typically reads as. So sRGB will give you a gamma of 2.2, you'll get something like this. And as you see, I've altered this one on the side. What we have done in there is 0.454, which does this to it. Um, it. It kind of reverses it, but the idea is actually to take something that's already been gamma 2.2 adjustments levels 0.454 and bring it back down into that range. Now this is a 16-bit file and so as a result um, I get pretty much back what I had expected to have. If this had been an 8-bit file uh, information again would be lost in that conversion. So in that conversion I would start to see banding occur in the, this, this other range. So uh, converting an 8-bit via gamma is, is not uh, useful. You want to make sure that you store it correctly the, right, uh, um, the first time. Uh, if you are sending out, say, an 8-bit image um, or dealing with 8-bit imageries, you, you have to make sure that first the gamma is, is correctly stored and that you maximize the amount of range that you have as possible. So you can't have like a half size mount and you have to do that ignore vertical scale kind of idea or put an auto level or something like that on it before you export it. If, uh, if there's no other option than to convert it to eight bits at some point. So uh, just keep that in mind. So that's the general news on gamma and these uh, different format options. Hopefully this has been relatively useful to you. Again, if you're going to another piece of software with these files, investigate from their point of view uh, what is the best way to get exactly what you need. I will do uh, two additional videos which will discuss exporting to Maya as well as exporting to Unreal to try and get the same results so you can see what kind of um, settings you should use in those. So that'll be coming up soon.